today we're going to brine, then cook, and then maybe, if we're feeling adventurous, carve <laughs> a turkey. <laughs> One thing at a time. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Studying. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now. And don't forget to like and comment on this video, and hit the bell icon so, so YouTube will know to notify you when we have something new to share. Today, we are celebrating the upcoming stateside Turkey Day! Also known as Thanksgiving. There's a lot of connotations with Thanksgiving. We're not getting into that. It's a day to eat turkey. That's as far as it goes here. Right? Anyway, Fawn, not for you! Fawn is being super extra needy today. All seven Which is saying a lot, of because the other she's cats really needy. are napping. Full on, not moving, napping. Except for Fawn. Yeah, this is video number two now. You can probably tell because I'm wearing the same clothes. Somebody asked me um, in one of the other videos, Why are you still wearing that Ireland shirt and the brocade hat? And I think my response was because we wear the same clothes until they get up and walk away by themselves. <laughs> but in reality, it's because we film three or four, sometimes five videos in the same day because sadly, this is not what we do full time, but we hope to someday. On that vein, if you've ever thought of becoming a patron of City Setting, there's a link in the description. We're not going to push too hard on any of that stuff. Okay, so today we're going to teach you how to brine, cook, and I'm not going to show you how badly I massacre carving a turkey. But Alton Brown did an excellent show where he showed you Several, how actually. to carve a variety of poultry. Yeah. And he made it look so simple and so I'm not even going to compete fabulous. with that. Just look it up. Do what he did. But anyway, to brine a turkey, my way, um, you're going to need A, a turkey. The size actually doesn't matter as long as it fits into B, your cooler. Now, we actually defrosted it in this cooler, so I know it fits quite nicely. Inside said cooler, I also have some ice packs, pre-frozen. I have three of them in there, but keep adding them as needed. You want this to stay cold over time, okay? So I'm getting the cooler cold, you know, cooled down, and then we're going to add everything in. You're going to need two gallons of water. You can close it. Two gallons of water. You're going to need a cup and a half of salt. I like pickling salt, but you can use kosher salt. You can use rock salt if you really want to. You just have to dissolve it. You're going to need a cup of sugar. Different recipes call for different amounts of these. Some people use brown sugar. I don't know. Brown sugar in turkey just doesn't sound right to me. I like it to be a nice, flavorful bird, but I don't necessarily want molasses and cream. I think perhaps if we were planning on smoking this turkey... Which someone asked. Which... Some year we will do. Maybe oh, next year. yes, we will. That I think the brown sugar might actually lend yeah, itself for that, nicely it might be nice. to a smoked turkey. But we're not doing that this year. Right. So we're sticking with white sugar. Some other things you're gonna need. I have our kettle, a kettle with about a half gallon of hot water in it. It's not necessarily boiling anymore, but it's pretty fresh off the boil. Some bay leaves. I'm probably gonna use like two. Not that many. Black peppercorns. I'm gonna use about that many, like I always do. And I have here four oranges and four lemons. The exact amount does not matter. If you use two, you're probably not using enough. And if you put in 20 of each, you probably use too much. Beyond that, alter as necessary. And I'm just going to apologize right now that I might end up throwing one of these at Fawn. No, you won't. Those are clean. Fine, baby girl. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take these guys out because they don't really aid in the mixing. And forget what I said before about pre-cooling. I'm going to put hot water in it. I'm a blonde, what can I say? And I only do this like once a year, so it's not exactly something I do all, all, all the time. First thing I'm actually going to do is pour this hot water in. Now this was sanitized. We use star sand on it. If you don't have star sand, that's fine. Just use like a little tiny bit of bleach, just like you would if you were going to clean out your sink or you know things like that. You want it to be sanitized. So it's clean because you are going to be putting a bird in there. You are going to let it sit there for a few days. So, you know, you want it to be clean. But first ingredients that I want to put in are going to be the stuff that needs to be dissolved. For instance, the cup and a half of salt. Now, somebody's going to say that sounds like a lot of salt. And it is a lot of salt. However, it's not all going to get into the bird. 
and a little bit as to why you brine. As I understand it, and I meant to actually look this all up and give you a very scientific, very boring reasoning behind why. What my understanding of it is, is the cell walls in the turkey, in the meat, they want to accept salt. Salt keeps things, uh, keeps water in. So does sugar, okay? They also both happen to be semi-preservative, which is part of those properties. But the reason that this is helpful is they pull in the water, which is flavored with lemons and, and oranges and the black peppercorns and garlic. I mentioned garlic, right? There's garlic in this. If I didn't, there's three cloves of garlic in this. And the bay leaves. All those flavors get sucked into the cell walls, but they're not as likely to let it out. They go for what's called an equilibrium. The cells try to have as much fluid in them as the surrounding water. So even though it sounds like a lot of salt, most of it really doesn't ever make it into the bird. And then you rinse it off really good just before you cook it. Wonderful. It adds flavor. It does not make it taste salty. So many people think it does. It doesn't make it taste salty at all. If you made it taste salty, you put too much salt in. Cup and a half of I don't know what Brian just told you, but I let my fingers do the walking. And I believe what he told you was actually correct. It does <laughs> molecularly that. change the meat so that it absorbs more moisture, thus retaining more moisture through the cooking process. It also seasons the meat with the salt so it is seasoned from the inside out, thus having a more even flavor profile for your enjoyment. In the words of Homer Simpson, I am so smart, S-M-R-T, S-M-A-R-T. <laughs> So anyway, that was the salt going in. Now I'm going to put the sugar in. Just one cup of sugar. Now this is a half, before anybody asks, this is a half cup measure, so I'm using two to do a cup, and I used three for the salt, right? You saw that, right? You need a spoon. Why do I need a spoon? Oh yeah! Exactly. I need a, a, an implement of stirring. Oh, Probably not our magic stick though, that yeah, would be bad. That would be bad. That would kill the yeast <laughs> that we've been trying to grow. But look, a spoon. And all you want to do is just get this dissolved. That's that's really it. I'm not going to necessarily show you the inside of this because it's white on white on white. In other words, it's not overly exciting. Not at all. Okay, so that's mixed up good. That actually didn't take long at all, maybe like a minute. The reason you use the hot water, if you didn't know already, is because things dissolve a lot easier in hot water than in cold water. However, you do not want to put that bird in too hot water because then you're boiling it not brining it and that's just not good so i also have a cup a gallon of cool water that i'm going to put in and through the magic of television another half gallon Bling! gotta love that another half gallon going in At this point, I'm going to put in, it's a little warm. I don't really want it to be warm even. I'm going to put in my initial ice things to cool that down. So at this point, garlic, bruised, in. Bay leaves, I don't know, two, anything, two, three. One, two, they're big. Peppercorns. About that much. What is that, like two tablespoons? Yeah, maybe. So far you can tell this is a very scientific thing. Oranges, very easy. All I'm gonna do is cut it in half. Give it a little squeeze with this obligatory squint so you don't get it in your eyes. Because we will be cutting lemons soon. And if you watched... I don't even know anymore. Ginger beer. Ginger beer. Ginger beer. If you watch that, you get to see Brian making horrific noises and expressions because he had a, a cut on his Do we hand. have to make a big deal about that? I feel like a, People... a wussy boy. People understand pain, particularly when it comes to lemon juice. The reason I had a Am cut right? on my yeah, the reason I had a cut on my finger is from grating the ginger. I had to put my scale mail glove on because I slipped and well, we all know what that feels like, right? 
onto the lemons. Now I'm just giving them a gentle squeeze. I'm not going too crazy. This is going to sit in there for three days, maybe four. It's it's going to get in it. I'm not really all that worried. Do you need a timer? Yes. Need to stir it all around. Oh. And part of the thing with the um, salt and the sugar is that it will break down the fruit as well oh, yeah. as penetrate the meat. So that will help with the process and getting all those flavors mixed together as well. All right. Probably didn't need the spoon. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so I put a little bit more um, ice packs and stuff in this over a couple of minutes, maybe like five minutes, just to get it down to where it feels cool to my hand. Okay. So hindsight is twenty twenty, and in the future, what we might do is actually put our salt and sugar in a pot and let that dissolve and then cool before adding it to our container. You're so smart. Maybe you're SMRT. I might be. I don't do it that way only because that way I'm dirtying another pot to do this. It's just, I'm lazy. I'm a guy. <laughs> Throw it all in there and you're done. Anyway, so the next step, very ceremonially, take your turkey, which as you can see, it's draining still. I took it out of the plastic. I took it into the sink. I rinsed everything out. I removed the stuff that shall not be mentioned. That nasty stuff that goes inside it that some people eat. I don't know how. And then put it in. You want to make sure it's totally submerged. This turkey has been thawed. It is no longer frozen. Oh yeah. Thaw your turkey. A frozen turkey put in here probably won't work very well. Now I have heard some things too. People have said don't use previously frozen turkey to do this because they do inject it with a sodium solution. Sometimes that's true. This is an Aldi turkey uh, and I don't believe they actually do that. They're, they're pretty good about things like that, but I didn't check. I didn't learn about that until afterwards. But anyway, so now what I'm going to do is put my ice packs on top. They're also going to act as weights. And then we found this lovely ice blanket. That's the same idea. I'm going to put that over the top. You want to make sure this stays relatively cold. Think refrigerator cold. You want it, you know, no, no more than say 45 degrees, 50 degrees. That's why you use a cooler. That should keep it nice and cold. If you have a ginormous refrigerator that is sad and empty, by all means, you can keep it in and there. And a large enough vessel to do this in, go for it. I would probably put a lid on it because you really don't want your turkey tasting like last night's tuna salad. Just a thought. Um, some other things. This is going to sit in our kitchen for the next three to four days. We're going to be uh, keeping an eye on it, taking its temperature, making sure it stays cool. And constantly refreshing the ice packs. The reason I don't put ice in it is because ice will dilute the brine. You can do that. Just remember, you might have a slightly more diluted brine by the end. Not the end of the world, just might not be as effective. You might need to go an extra day. Um, you, If this gets too warm, take the turkey out, put it in the fridge, chill that sucker down. You do not want, want it to get into what they call, well, Alton Brown calls it the danger zone. That's pretty much anything about 55 degrees up to about 120. That's where most of the bad stuff that can happen to humans happens to their food. Now, this is going to get cooked. It's going to get cooked at least 165 degrees, which if we remember our pasteurization rules, 165 degrees for 10 seconds or 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, I think, is pasteurized, which means it kills about 99.9% .9 of pathogens that can bother you. But we will be getting that soon, and we will see you then. Okay, so it's been about four days, and you can tell it's a different day because we're wearing different clothes. Actually, that's come up a few times. People have said, how come you're still wearing the same t-shirt and hat? Because we do like four videos in one day. Life is short, man. You know, there's not a whole lot of time. So we try to do as much as we can in one shot. Anyway, so it's been about four days. The turkey was sitting in the brine for about that long. Actually, it's been five days. The turkey was in the brine for four of those five days. I took it out of the brine. I rinsed it really good at the sink. We didn't video this part because I thought you can picture what that looks like. You hold it under the water and rinse it off. Then I put it in a bowl, but in the bottom of that bowl is a small bowl that holds this up. Okay. You do such a good fan of what We're going to show our little mock setup once we move said turkey into here. Now, I washed my hands, just so you're aware, but this thing's really cold too, so bear with me. So I'm going to pick up the turkey, and you can probably hear nope. it. There's and it was glass. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm going to place it into 
the cooking rack roasting pan apparatus thing. Now, if you notice the way I did it, put it breast side down. I like to do that. Some people say different, and I'm just going to preface this whole video with there's a zillion ways to do this. There's a lot of really bad ways to do this. My way is not the most technologically savvy, and it's not the most modern, and it doesn't use all the fancy stuff, but it's simple, and it works, and I've never had a bad turkey. The reason why we're showing, sharing this with you is because we've talked to family members, mm. friends, random people Lots on the streets, people. and they're like, turkey is so hard to cook. The people it run up to us on the street and say that. Dry. <laughs> it comes out dry, and... I just don't know and I do all this stuff and Brian always gives them this look like they have three heads because for him it's it is an easy. incredibly simple process I didn't even want to make this video she's like no people need to know this I'm like really <laughs> and I think that's part of what we're trying to show in our videos overall with the the bread making and the brewing and the gardening and everything is that yes there's lots of parts that you need to know but once you understand those concepts all these things are incredibly simple. I have a new t-shirt idea. Don't overthink it. <laughs> so for the turkey, we brined it. We already shared that with you. You make the brine, you put it in there, and you wait. Sounds now the familiar, bowl, doesn't I, it? I wanted to show you something. See, there's some liquid in the bottom there. I had this glass bowl that I put this way, so it was sitting on that. I knew there wasn't that much liquid in there, so that way it wasn't sitting in the liquid even longer, which we don't want. Now you saw when Brian transferred the turkey from there to there that that the very end was still sitting in the, that liquid and he kind of made a mess as he tends to do. Um, but the reason what? why we have him not. do this is that if I were to do it, it would be an even larger mess. The turkey would be so, on the floor. <laughs> or out the window or, you know, I don't oh, know just a curtain there. something crazy. Um, so we brined it. We moved it to a pan and now he's going to season it. Now, what I like to do there are, again, a million ways to do this. Many people will put like oranges and lemons and stuff inside inside the cavity of the turkey. I actually don't like to do that too much. To me, this has a lot of flavor packed into it already from the brine. Any more is just like, now it's not gonna be turkey. It's like orange jerky or something. You know, just, yeah, no. And this leads us to the topic of stuffing. All right, I'm gonna have to pull an Alton Brown here. Stuffing is wrong, man. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> do you like stuffing? I love stuffing. I think it's awesome. By the way, you know why they call it stuffing? Actually, they call it dressing. Dressing. Dressing is the polite term because stuffing was mean. Saying get stuffed was a like a very, very bad thing to say to someone. So calling it stuffing was bad. So they called it dressing. Dressing. Stuffing. Anyway, right. um, so we're... If you want to have stuffing with your turkey, cook it separate. Please bake it separate. Don't put it inside. Don't don't because it, it, they don't cook at the same rate, and you won't. You can have some serious contamination problems as a result. So just don't do it. Um, so cook the bird, cook the stuffing separate. That's it. All right. So what I'm gonna do is this is olive oil. This is not the fancy stuff. This is just pure olive oil. It's actually just plain Publix olive oil. So it's probably not extra virgin or anything like that. And I'm just going to pour some oil on this guy over the top. If you don't like getting your hands dirty, this is probably not the method for you. Give the bird a good rub down. You want to get like every little crevice and area everywhere. I don't generally coat the inside because I don't worry about that as much. But I do want to get all the out, outer areas. Now, you see this flap of skin? I'm going to shove that inside. You want it to be as basically one piece as possible like even these wings sticking out they're okay because usually all we do with the wings is throw them in soup <laughs> that's true <laughs> so if they get a little extra browning i'm not worried about that the maillard effect is strong with turkey it's just a it's a thing um what is the maillard effect brian <sighs> the maillard effect is to meat what caramelization is to sugar it's similar. They're not really the same thing. The Maillard effect actually produces thousands of different substances, and that's what creates that lovely flavor that we think of when we see, ooh, it's crispy from the fire. What? <laughs> that's what it is. It, it, was it was discovered, it wasn't invented, by some doctor a long, long time ago, and, he, and that's basically what it is. There's a longer, more scientific definition, but it's YouTube, folks. Now... Well, I'm not quite done yet. So. Yeah, you're getting 
the towel and the turkey. Oh. I'll keep the towel out of the turkey. <laughs> I do it simply, so I'm going to take some salt. And I'm just sprinkling a bunch over the top. I'm not getting too, too crazy with it. Some people will make sure it gets all inside. Here's the thing. As this cooks, the juices are going to roll around the sides. That's why you put the breast on the bottom. Generally speaking, the white meat is the drier meat. So if the juices all kind of end up going down there, they all go through it, and the breast comes out nice and juicy. As far as salting it at this point, remember, it was sitting in a brine solution. So... It doesn't make it taste salty. It doesn't make it salty. But there is some salt in there. But there is some salt in there. So don't, don't like heavy hand the salt. Right. Now the pepper, on the other hand, you can put as much as you want. <laughs> okay, and I have a theory. The more time you eat, the longer you'll live. <laughs> I almost said it with a straight face. <laughs> Brian seasons pretty much everything with time. So. There's nothing wrong with that. Time is a good herb. <laughs> it's got like a nice lemony uh, brightness to it. I can't really explain it. I just like it and I think it works really well for almost everything. If you don't like thyme, don't use it. You could put basil and oregano on it for all I care. I've done that too. Rosemary is another good one. Rosemary is great too. Yeah, if we had a lot of rosemary growing right now, I'd probably take a bunch of sprigs and stuff, stuff them inside it because they do add a nice aroma to it and all that kind of thing. It's pretty minor and subtle at this point though because the base flavoring is already in it. And I like my turkey to taste like turkey. You know, not like oranges, lemons, and other stuff. So, now comes the important bit. And this is the part that freaks people out. You can start at one temperature and lower to another temperature and do all this stuff. You know what I do? Put the oven to 350, stick the bird in, and in about an hour and a half, start checking it. Let me show you how to take its temperature. Can you go grab me a thermometer? Yes. I'm going to... I probably shouldn't even do this now because if I puncture the skin, I have a chance for juices to run out, but I want to show you the ways to do this, okay? Because a lot of people use a thermometer, but they use it wrong, and it'll lie to you if you don't use it correctly. And we will wash this when we're done with it. Stuck in there. So, if you're using an instant read, this is easier because they get you up to temp really, really quickly. If you're using a slow one, you have to hold it there, and that means your oven's open, you're losing temperature, so, what you want to do is, after about an hour and a half, if you look right about here, that is the breast. I want to poke this in as far as it'll go. If I hit bone, pull back a little. I want to hit center of mass of that, that piece, right? That way, that's the center of it. When that number is 155, I'm going to pull it from the oven. Right now, it's 36. It's got <laughs> so, a ways to go. It has a long way to go. <laughs> Now, that's just one spot. I'm going to hit both sides. I'm not going to keep doing it because I don't, want to, I don't want to actually do it, but I would hit this side. Then I might go back here. I might find one of the legs. Any area you can find to do that, you want to do that. The more readings you get, the better. If you're already in the 160s all over the place, but one spot says 145, lower, your, lower the temperature of your oven to like 300 degrees and let it coast a little longer. Can you wash that piece? Well, you don't have to do it right this side. The reason I take it out at 155, I can already hear people going, oh, you have to cook turkey to 165. You're right. But you don't have to leave it in the oven until 165. This is a large bird. There's a lot of mass. At 155, when it comes out, it's still cooking, and it's going to retain that heat for quite some time. When, I, when it comes out, I'm going to take it out, I'm going to cover it in tin foil, and let it rest for about 20 to 25 minutes, a long time. And don't, over that time, the juices will all re-sep, re, not separate, they'll go back, redistribute, that's the word. They'll redistribute, and the temperature will, will gradually coast up, that's what they call it, it'll coast to that 165 range. And really, 165 is a little high, 160 to 162, I think, is the actual ideal. They just say 165 because it's the safe zone. But that's why a lot of people end up with dry turkey. They aim for 165 in the oven. Then, oh, got to get everybody together. Everybody gets to the table. All the other food has to be brought out. That turkey's been sitting for 45 minutes now, but it was hot already. And they might not have done it properly, so it's sitting hot. Or they left it in the oven with the oven off, thinking it's not cooking. Yeah, that oven is still is 350 or, or more. So it's overcooking that turkey. Every minute actually does count, and it does make a difference. Again, it's all in the details. It's all the little things. So we're going to get this in the oven, and we'll see you in... 
about two hours, get, give or take. It smells so good. <laughs> and we're back. And I took it out at 155 in that area there, and it's already coasted to 162. I haven't even covered it up yet. But it is resting. Some will say you want to take it out of this because this is hot. I would normally agree, except that this is all really hot, and it's dripping juices. It's away from the juices, so it's not sitting in, it's not sitting on heat. It's fine. Um, but I just wanted to show you how it's still going up. It's at 163 now. It's still cooking. So that's the key. Parts that should be 165 are going to be 165, and that's pretty much everything. I mean, you know, all your dark meat you really want it there. I mean. So, for our particular situation, this stayed in the oven for... Uh, well, I put it in for an hour and a half. I tested it. It was not ready. I put it in for 20 more minutes. I tested it. It was close. Another 20 minutes. So, that's 90 minutes and 40 minutes. I can't math today. That's like two, hour, here, so two hours and 10 minutes. <laughs> Okay, now this is like a 14 pounder, I think. Yes. Yeah, this was a 14 pound turkey. Don't go by those things of for every pound it's this. Don't do that. Do not become that kind of cook. Put it in the oven when you believe it should not be done yet. I just had to turn the oven back on. When you believe it's not done yet, test it, find out. Then over time, you will get used to all right. It needs another 15 minutes. It needs another 20 minutes. You will know these things. Because every oven, every situation, there's just a very slight variance between each Our cooking. oven, when I put it to 350, is actually 343. And then with elevation, that changes. Yeah, elevation can change so. it. and There's so many other factors. How many times you open that door can change it. How much extra the oven has to work. Is your carcass <laughs> turkey... <laughs> it's a carcass when you're done. Is it completely open? Is it a little fatter in this area than that area? There's so, it's a, it, I mean, it's food. There's so many variables. Don't just go flat by one of those recipes. I, I hate that kind of cooking. Um, and I'm sorry if anybody does it, but it doesn't make for anything creative. And you tend to blame the recipe rather than say, I should have checked it 10 minutes ago. We are now going to step off of our soapboxes and get back. To oh no, steps. I stand on this soapbox the entire time. <laughs> But anyway, what we're going to do now, we're going to cover this loosely with tin foil. And really what you're trying to do is almost, it's kind of steaming it, but not really. You're just trying to keep some of that heat in for a little while. Few noisy tin foil. There's two sides to tin foil. Smooth side, shiny side. Since we're trying to keep the heat in, we go shiny side towards the turkey. Now nah, we're just going to loosely cover and not burn ourselves. By the way, um, curious thing, the reason why there's two sides to tinfoil is because tinfoil has to come out so thin that they put two sheets together through the rollers. So the sides that are touching each other go stay shiny. The other ones go next to a roller and get matted. Now that's something else you know. I'm great fun at parties. <laughs> So what we want to do now is let this go about 20 minutes. You can even go like half an hour. It's not going to get cold. But if you cut it right now, juices are going to squirt out all over the place. Cats and dogs will start living together. Mass hysteria. Bad things. You want to let it rest. It's going to coast up to temperature, probably a couple degrees past temperature, to be honest. But it'll be fully cooked, and all those juices just kind of go back in. The heat squeezes them out. It squeezes those cells and forces the liquids out. But that's what makes things you know, tastes good, is all the juiciness and everything. By resting, they relax and the heat lets go and the juices all go back in so that everything just reabsorbs and it comes out wonderful. And uh, when we come back in like 20 minutes, I'll probably cut off a piece and eat it because, you know, I'm hungry and that's what I do. See you in 20 minutes. So, as you can see, it's been rested, the tinfoil has been removed, I moved it onto a platter so we can cut it up and all that. And I'm just going to Give a little cut into it, maybe take a taste. I suck at carving. I'm just gonna say it right now, so you're not gonna get to see me do that whole thing. I'm just gonna <laughs> cut into it a little bit here, take out a chunk. I can hear the comment section now. <laughs> Brian, you really should learn how to carve turkey. Go ahead, go ahead and grab it. It's food. You can eat it. I'll be here for like four days cutting this. <laughs> All right, we got enough to nibble on. We're not, if you're not doing a carving thing. Wow. Yeah, I know. All right, so got some pieces here. 
I'm going to turn this around. Brian just chopped into it, but to show you what it looks like. It is it is really moist all the way through. It's really cooked juicy. all the way through. The pieces, it just kind of started <laughs> falling <laughs> apart <laughs> as he was cutting into it. That's why I was like, yay! Um, it smells wonderful. It's moist. It's tender. It's succulent. It's flavorful. It's still very turkey flavored, so mm. it, it's not overwhelmed by the brining. Yeah, it's just turkey the best way. <laughs> what? It kind of is. I mean, I really like turkey, so there's that. It's the skin is a little bit salty, has a tiny citrusy hit to it, but the meat itself is really nice and moist. It's cooked all the way through, though. I mean, you can totally tell it's it's cooked. And you can see there's, there's juice coming out, but it's not like it's all pouring out. That's intentional. That's what resting does. It allows it to do that. All right, we are going to um, eat this along with some other stuff. <laughs> Off camera, though, because, you know, as much as you guys want to do, like, a live feed of... Pardon me. Siri had a timer going for... <laughs> The mashed potatoes. That's another video. Um, anyway, as long as, you know, as much as you guys wanted to have a live view of our D&D game yesterday, I really don't think a live view of us eating turkey would be appropriate. I tend to eat quickly. So, brine the turkey, rinse the turkey, bake the turkey, let it rest, and then enjoy. Eat the turkey. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to find us on Facebook if you're a Facebook person or the multitude of other venues that we were listed in the description below. And for those of you that celebrate it, happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time on City Setting. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, Consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my rectum. Yeah. I think you need to do that in the next video.